Hey, hello everyone, welcome back to OpenGL. Today we're going to be uh, look going back to the collision mesh class and we are going to be adding into our uh, rigid body transformations that we just input into the rigid body class. And we will also be looking at uh, another collision type. This time we're looking at collisions with spheres. Since, uh, like I said last time, or a few times I think, uh, we're going to have a fine grain collision. Uh, the goal is a fine grain collision that includes face to face. So uh, we wanted to determine if two planes collide. However, we don't always need to have a collision mod or a collision uh, mesh with each object. We might just want to keep a sphere there. Uh, say if it's a if it's a ball or something, that would be it would be uh, more accurate to have a sphere as the as the bounding region rather than a collision mesh. So as, as a result, we need to implement an algorithm to determine the collision between a plane and a sphere. Uh, so we'll start in collision mesh, and we will start with the first thing I said, which will be integrating the rigid body transformations into our collision testing here. Uh, so we'll start by having a forward declaration here. So class rigid body, and that's just there. And then um, in the only new things that we're going to add are in the collides with, uh, in the collides with function under algebra, it collides with face, and we need to add two new parameters. These are going to be two rigid bodies here. We'll have one rigid body pointer, uh, this RB, and then the third parameter I will say is uh, rigid body pointer face RB. So this RB will be the rigid body uh, with the current face, so that'll come from mesh or that'll be attached to the collision mesh. And then face RB will be the rigid body associated with the parameter face that we have over here. All right, so let's hop over to collision mesh.cpp where we can first start by updating the parameters and the function name for, for the face collision. So the name became, for me at least, collides with face. And then the new parameters are gonna be a rigid body pointer this RB and then at the end another rigid body pointer but it's face rb this time and we will uh, take care of this method in a second however there are two things that we need to look at first thing is going to be just an include so we need to include rigidbody.h the reason why is because in collision mesh.h we have a forward declaration however we do not know what the source or the body this class is so by including the header file here uh, we avoid a circular definition and then also attach a a definition for that class there and then we're also going to have uh, separate from that we're going to have a few new utility methods the first one is going to be to multiply a 3d vector by a 4x4 four four matrix so it's going to return a glm vec3 and it will be mat4 vec3 mult pass in a glm mat4 uh, m and a glm vec3 v the reason why we're doing this uh, in a separate method is we could do something like this. So this is how you would traditionally uh, perform a transformation on, say, a point, and we wanted to get the result as a 3D vector. So we'd say glmvec3 res is equal to, or I'll say ret is equal to um, the cast to a, or we're going to call the constructor of a glmvec3, and in that constructor we're going to pass an m times a glm vec4 of v in 1.0f. So there's a, two extra constructors in here, and that is a lot of overhead, a lot of copying, a lot of this and a lot of that. However, there's a shortcut that we can use here, and that arises from uh, just the way, that, or just kind of from how we multiply a matrix and a vector. So let's say we had uh, our 4D matrix here, so four and four. And let's say, so I'll, I'll represent the rows as RI, or R1, R2, R3, and R4. And then we're multiplying this by a 4 by 1 vector with V1, V2, V3, and V4. And I'll just call this V. So the result here is going to be another 4D vector. And it'll be v dotted with r1 v dotted with r2 v dotted with r3 and v dotted with r4 
So this would, this will be the result. Now, we don't. First of all, we don't care about this last element here. That if we're looking to get a three D vector as x y z. As a result, we don't care about that fourth element there. That's just there for uh, rotations and translations. But they, the effect will be uh, seen in the actual result here. Um, and then the other assumption that we know, or the other thing that we know in this in this uh, long conversion here, is that the fourth element will always be a 1. So v4 will equal a 1. So what we can do now is we can say that the result ret will be equal to v1 times r1 1, 1 as in the first element in the first row plus v2 times r1 2 plus v3 times r1 3 and then plus 1 times r1 4 like that and this will continue on for r2 r3 and r4 just like that so we have this short or not just R2 and R3 actually. So we don't have to cast anything or we don't have to call any constructors here. We can simply just loop through the elements and then just take the dot product and we can have an implicit one at the end of, uh, of the VEC3. So what we're going to do is we're going to have our GLN VEC3 read as a placeholder and then we're going to loop. So for int i is equal to zero, i is less than three, i plus plus and red at i, so the ith element in the return vector is going to be equal to v at 0 times m at 0 at i. Since we're, So uh, GLM matrices are column major, so the first index accessing here will give us the 0th column, which is what we want. And this is plus v at 1 times m at 1 at i. So once again, first, or, yeah, first column, i throw, and plus v2 times m 2 i and then plus m 3 i once again where there's an implicit one uh, attached to the multiplication here except we don't need to do that because that will just give us the same number and then at the end we can just return right so this is just a little simplification that will allow us to avoid overhead of uh, doing multiplications all right the next thing we're going to do is uh, have a method for a uh, linear combination solution here so we will um we, it's essentially going to be what we have right over here where we want to determine if a point what the, what the linear combination of a few vectors is to get to a point so we're essentially transforming into a coordinate system here uh, so we'll have it'll return a float pointer because we want to return a um or wait we can return a, a, a 3D vector here. So GLM vec3, uh, it'll be lincom solution. We're going to pass in a GLM vec3a, GLM vec3b, GLM vec3c, and a GLM vec3 point. So what we're going to do is we're going to follow the same exact algorithm. So we represent the point as a linear combination of the three basis vectors. So we're going to have a GLM mat, four by three, once again, column major, so four columns, three rows, M, and we will pass in columns here. So four A, B, C, and point are going to be the columns. Once again, the, uh, the algebra behind this was in the collision theory video that we did. That was the math one. And we want to do our uh, reduction, our row reduction. So R R E F on M, and then we can simply return M at three, I believe. Yeah, return M at three, which gives us the three values in the fourth column, so the, or the third column if you count from zero, uh, which is the solution. So once again, just reduction will give us that solution at, or the constants for the linear combination in the last column. All right, and then next, uh, we're going to have one uh, last method before we get to the uh, get to the actual coding that uh, we with the rigid bodies. So this will just be another 
uh, method that we've seen before. It'll be a return type boolean, and its face contains points. Pass in a glm vec 3a, glm vec 3b, glm vec. I keep holding shift down for too long. Uh, N for the normal, and then glm vec 3 point. And all we're going to do here is we're going to get the combination constants using the method up here. Uh, so glm vec 3 um, v is equal to lin comb solution, passing an a, b, n, and the point as the columns. And I'll just rename this to c actually, since they're the constants. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have our conditions. So return, our conditions were that they both must be positive and they must add to something less than one. And once again, the math behind that is over here, where the two, the constants of the combination must be positive. However, they must sum to something that is less than one, which is seen right here in Cartesian coordinates. Uh, so we have to return here that um, uh, C at zero is greater than or equal to 0 0.0 F and C at one is greater than or equal to 0 0.0 F and C at zero plus C at one is less than or equal to 1.0 F. So this will just give us the same uh, solution as before. All right, now let's head over to collides with face and we'll use these two methods along with updating our rigid or our point transformation. So the first thing we'll do is we'll actually implement or use this method here. So we're gonna find case, we're in case two now, and we have our intersection point. And we wanna determine if this point is in the face. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace all this code here. We're gonna delete it. And what we're going to say is if face contains points, pass in A or uh, pass in P2, P3, and this dot norm and then intersection as, as the solution. So if this is true, return true. Otherwise we want to continue because there are other uh, lines to consider for the collision. All right, so this will hopefully get us the same output. So we can test this once again, or we can actually just test this with null pointers as rigid bodies. And then we still should get the that they are that they do collide. So one, that's right. All right, good. All right. Um, so now let's take care of the rigid bodies. So the purpose of having the rigid bodies here is so that we can transform the points because the mesh list stores the base uh, the base points of the collision mesh. However, for each instance. We want to transform them, we want to rotate them, translate them, scale them, however we want. And we added to the collision or to the rigid body structure, if you remember last time, the model matrix, which will allow us to have a model matrix for each instance. And then we can transform each one of these points according to that instance, which is exactly what we want. So we're looking at P1 right now, and we want to transform the base point to P uh, to the instance of this RB. So we're going to use that new method, mat4 vec3 molt, and we are going to pass in the matrix, which is this RB dot model. And we're going to multiply that by the 3D vector, which is the point at I1. And once again, we can avoid the overhead by just using that method. And then it'll be the same call for each of the three points here. And make sure to only transform the points before subtracting. We, we must transform the points before subtracting P1. So once again, the, mo the matrix to multiply by will be this RB dot model for P1, P2, and P3, just like that. All right, and then the other thing that we need to do is is transform the normal. So glm vec3 norm, or I'll say this norm, is equal to 
this rb dot normal model times uh, this dot norm. Now, if we remember, we have two matrices here. We have the model matrix and the normal model matrix. The model matrix performs the translations, this and that, rotations, the whole, the whole shebang. The normal model cuts out the translations because the normal vector for the normal vector will only want to consider uh, the rotations and the scalings. We don't care about the trend about the translations because the normal the normal vector is just a direction. The points are points that we need to translate, but the normal model will always have the same direction unless rotated or scaled. So we need to get this normal here like that. And then since we have an updated normal, when we call face contains point, we need to call that on this normal using this normal as the third vector in the uh, system. And then that also applies for when we get the current case. So calling line plane intersection, we need to pass in this norm like that. Right, and then similarly uh, for the U points, we're simply going to call mat for vec3 mult on the points themselves, and then we will use the face RB uh, transformations. So mat for vec3 mult, the matrix to multiply by will be face RB dot model, and then it'll be the face at I1. So I'll just copy this over here three times. And once again, we need to count, we need to multiply before subtracting by P1. All right, so this is what your code should look like if you are using these methods here. And everything else sh should work exactly the same. So let's go ahead and into main.cpp and let's just test this all to make sure it works. So we will have our rigid body, so rigid, body uh, PRB and I will just have an uh, I'll have the default constructor just because I want to make sure that the matrix the matrix multiplication works and then rigid body um, URB just like that and then when colli calling collides with face we need to pass in a reference to PRB for the this face and then a re or this RB and then a reference to URB for face uh, rigid body. All right, so let's run this and we should get the same result that they both collide because these rigid bodies are, have not been transformed and that's exactly what we get. Now if we were to transform one of these, uh, so let's say that we um, kept the same size, so glm vec3 1.0f, same mass, and then the position however was 10.0f and 10.0f, we should get that there is no collision. And there is no collision, good. Because it's moved away from the uh, the P face here. All right, so let's just reset that. All right, so that's the first part of this. Uh, now, the next part is going to be actually doing uh, the next type of collision, which will be the um, where is it? The sphere plane collision. Okay, let's consider that a general sphere in 3D space and a general plane in 3D space. The way we're going to determine if there's a collision between the two is I got all of this from the uh, Stack Overflow question, which I will, I will link down below. Uh, the, the general gist is we need to get the distance from the center of the sphere to the plane. And if that distance is less than the radius, then there is a collision. So the reason why this works is because when we intersect a plane and a sphere, it will produce a circle of intersection. And if that center, if the center of that circle is is within the sphere, then we know that there is a collision. And that's just, I mean, you can, you can kind of see it here. Um, if the point in which, uh, or if any point in which the uh, plane and the sphere intersects um, is in, inside the sphere, then 
um, it's it's just going to be that that's going to be the that it's going to result in a collision between the sphere because there's an intersection in this in the set of points in both. Um, now the tricky part is determining the distance there. Uh, the distance will. The, now there is a, a little trick here that we can use is, in that since we're looking at the distance to a plane, the perpendicular distance to that plane will rely on the normal vector, which is what we already have, which is good. So we're going to go into one note now, and the formula for the distance here relies on dot product. So we're going to say the distance d is going to be equal to co minus po. So the center of the sphere minus some point on the plane. Also, and this is P1 actually. So let's say this is our point on the plane. So CL minus P1 dotted with, let me just rewrite this here as um, P1 CO dotted with the normal unit vector. Where the normal unit vector is the normal vector over the magnitude of the normal vector, like that. So essentially, if we have our uh, sphere here, I, I'm just going to do this as a depiction onto a 2D space. So a sphere here, plane here, center over here, and a point over here. So this is P1, this is C, the center. This will be the vector between them. So this is P1, C0. We essentially want to depict this, or um, uh, we want to project it onto the normal vector. Let's say that's our normal, ve normal vector. And um, how we're, the way we're going to do that is we're just going to extend this or look like make it look like it extends and we're going to get the component of this vector p1co that is parallel to the normal which is which happens to be the dot product so we want to get this distance here where these are perpendicular and that distance turns out be, to be the distance from the center to the plane so once again we need to make sure that d is actually between negative r and r because we can have a neg this distance will technically be negative since the normal points outwards. Uh, so this is kind of, you can, you can think of this as the negative normal vector. Um, so it has to be between negative R and R. And then from here, we can calculate the center of the circle of intersection, which is equal to CO, the center of the sphere, plus the distance times the normal unit vector. Once again, so we're projecting the uh, the vector from P1 to C0 onto the normal unit vector, and the magnitude or the parallel um, the parallel component of that turns out to be the magnitude of uh, our distance. And because the normal vector we're considering the unit vector, which has um, a magnitude of one this just turns out to be how many or this will just still have a magnitude of, of just D. So D N, the magnitude of that vector is just D. So we're going in the direction of the plane going towards the plane along the unit normal vector, uh, a magnitude of D units. So that gives us that. But once again, this center or I don't know if I said this yet, but this center of intersection here is only indicative of the pl of the intersection with the plane. In our case, we need a little more um, we we need a little more accuracy than that. We can't just say, okay, does it intersect with the plane? Because our planes, our faces, are defined by points. P one. P2 and P3. So this is our face here. Like that. We need to determine if the center is near this face. Or it, it can either be in. 
but or it can be a distance of the radius of the circle which happens to be the distance here so d is the distance or if that circle happens to be like that so the center will be outside but it's still intersecting so there's a lot of ways that we can look at this but it turns out that there's a, a, a it's not a perfectly accurate way but it's a very good approximation so let's just or let's consider our or a perpendicular um, system like this it doesn't have to be perpendicular but we can just say it is so vectors a and b now our original or our original method to determine if a point was in here is if the components of the linear combination were both greater than zero and they added to something that is uh, less than one however if we need a distance, if we need a buffer here, so it, let's say it can be like over here, this center can go down to negative r, negative r, and it will still intersect. So negative r, negative r, or negative d, sorry. So something like this, where it still intersects, or it can be over here. And the way to determine if this circle will ever intersect the region that we want to, if it will ever intersect the face, is just expand the linear combination bounds. So we can do that just by taking this triangle and expanding it. So the conditions now become C1 and C2 must be greater than or equal to negative R, or negative D, sorry. And C1 plus C2 must be less than or equal to 1 plus d. So that's just this this line right here. c1 plus c2 is less than or equal to 1 plus d. Like that. So that's this line here, and that's the same inequality that we had before, except we have an extra factor. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at this in code. So we'll start by creating a new function, and I'm going to create it above face contains point. And it will be, we will call it uh, return type boolean face contains point range. And we'll have the same parameters glm vec 3a, glm vec 3b, the normal vector n, and then glm vec 3 point and float radius, which is our buffer or our extra distance that we can have. And then we're going to have the same call. So we'll say glm vec 3c is equal to the linear combination solution of a b n and points and then this time we're going to have a few extra um, we can have some extra space here so we need to say return c add zero is greater than or equal to negative r or um, negative radius and c at one is greater than or equal to negative radius and c at 0 plus c at 1 is less than or equal to 1.0 float plus radius. So once again, these, these are just inequalities that define our region here. I, I can actually, I'll put this in uh, uh, Desmos actually, which is another online calculator. Um, so we have, let's just have r is equal to 1 for now. Um, so we want our, com so x is greater than or equal to uh, r y or negative r so y is greater than or equal to negative r negative r and x plus y is less than or equal to 1 plus r so this intersection here will be the space that we want or um will be the the legal space that we can have now once again there is going to itch if we're considering accuracy these corners here should be rounded a bit like that However, this is a good approximation because the maximum distance should be like that, where this is a distance r. However, we're just going to give, we're going to have some space there. Um, so yeah, this is just where the intersections overlap. And then what we can actually do is in face contains point, we can just return, we can replace this with just a return face contains point range pass an a b n 
point and the radius will be 0 0.0f because we do not want any extra space there. All right, in collision mesh.h, we need to add a new function here. It'll be return type boolean and it's gonna be collides with sphere, pass in a rigid body, pointer this RB as before. And uh, next we're only gonna pass in a bounding region BR. So we can copy this function definition over. And I will paste it in. Add the face class tag here. You might be wondering why don't we need another rigid body here to transform the sphere? Well, uh, in our awk tree, which is where this will all end up, uh, these bounding regions get transformed automatically according to their attached rigid body. So when we call transform, this will automatically transform all of the points uh, according to the um, the uh, the rigid body here. Just like that. So now when it collides with sphere, uh, we first just want to check if br.type does not equal bound types dot sphere, then just return false because we can't we don't know how to check for that now. And then we're gonna follow the same general uh, or for now we're gonna follow the same general uh, calculations as face collides with face. So we want to apply the model transformations. So glm vec3 p1 is equal to mat4 vec3 mult of this rb or this rb dot model. Multiply that by this dot mesh dot points at i1. And then we will do the same for i2 and i3. And then we want to do the normal uh, the normal vector uh, transformation again. GLM vec3 norm is equal to this dot rb or this rb dot normal model. We need to use that matrix times this dot norm. And then we also want to have the unit normal. So GLM vec3 unit normal is equal to uh, just normal divided by GLM length of norm. That's just a formula just to ensure that this has a magnitude of one. And then uh, the next step in this is to calculate the distance vector from P1 to C0. So GLM vec3 distance is equal to br.center minus P1, where br is the sphere, the, the bounding region sphere. So we get the center of that. And once again, this is already transformed in the arc tree. So br.center minus p1. And then we get the distance. Float distance is equal to the dot the glm dot of the distance vector and the unit normal. Or distant, yeah, distance vector and unit normal. And then uh, we need our initial check. So if the absolute value of distance is less than vr.radius, then glm vec3 circle center is equal to br.center plus the distance times the unit normal. So this absolute value just comes from the fact that we can transform this inequality into, oops, uh, that's not right. The absolute value of the distance must be less than the radius r of this sphere. And I, you can kind of see that, once again, just an extra explanation here. If the center, or if the point was, uh, if the distance was, say, out here, and the, cir and the center of the circle was over there, then we would have something that is not, a circle that is not in the sphere. So that's not what we would want. So we get the, cir the, circle, the center of the circle, and then we need to return if it's within the face. So return face contains point, range and then we're uh, here what we can do is we can transform everything to the face um, faces coordinate system so we say p2 minus p1 which is our vector a then we p3 minus p1 which is our vector b the normal vector is norm as transformed the point will now be circle center minus p1 and we're just gonna 
subtract this from p1 just to get uh, it in the co proper coordinate system and then the radius will be br dot radius and then otherwise we're going to return false all right so that's that that's pretty much it honestly all right let's look at a uh, a quick example in geogebra so i have uh, the a slightly modified example from the stack overflow question here so we have our sphere which is centered at uh, one zero one or one zero negative one has a radius of two and our plane is x is equal to the square root of three times z which is this point so obviously uh, we see that there's an intersection between the sphere and the plane and let's look at a specific example where our face would have an intersection so if we had p1 p2 and p3 just randomly defined and these are our vectors over here we can see that the vectors uh, clearly go through that circle of the circle of the intersection there. Now, if we were to transform these points, so let's say we made it 10, 11, and 10.6, we can see now that the uh, the the face is m much farther away from the center of the circle of intersection. So this linear combination will not return anything uh, that we want. Now, if this was something a little like that, we can still see that there's an intersection, even, even though the center of the circle is not directly in the face. But the combination, it is still it is still a distance of, or it's still less than a radius away from that. So we, we will return that there is an intersection in that case, which is face contains point range. It's that linear combination solution that we want. All right, so let's try this out. Let's go into main.cpp. Let's, let's try, let's use another set of faces here. So we'll have a float V at nine. So nine, uh, nine floats here. We'll have zero, 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 three, 10 or 3 0 the square root of 3 I'm just following the example that I had above or in the geogebra and minus 3 10 or uh, 0 0.6 and the negative square root of 3 and then our indices were just in order so unsigned integer vi size 3 is going to be just 0, 1, 2, like so. And then we'll have a collision mesh. Collision mesh VF, uh, 3V, uh, 1VI are just our parameters. We explained those last time. Uh, then we have a rigid body for the instance. And I, I will just keep this as, an, as the identity matrix, so VRB default constructor then we'll have our bounding region so this has a center of uh, 1 0 and negative 1 and the radius is 2 and then we want to print out if there's a collision so standard c out vf dot faces at 0 dot collides with sphere a reference to vrb and br And then we can also attach a rigid body to the bounding region. So rigid body uh, RB2 is just a default constructor. And then I can say BR dot rigid uh, dot RB, or is that? In dot instance is equal to R, uh, a reference to RB2. And then uh, BR dot transform. So then we can, so this is essentially how it would happen in the awk tree. So if we run this now, we should get that there is a an intersection uh, with the face and the sphere. One and one, good. All right, so let's try moving the points away. So uh, we'll have the, uh, we'll say VRB dot position is equal to um, zero, 10, and zero, and then VRB dot transfer uh, dot uh, update and if we run this now we should get that there is no intersection in there 
and it's zero, which is exactly what we want. All right, yeah, so that is just, uh, that is pretty much all I wanted to do right now, just get the collision mesh updated, add the new rigid bodies to the transformations here, and then add the new collision, uh, the new collision type, which is the face with the sphere, and then soon, uh, not sure, when but at some point we will then be looking at going back to the oak tree and integrating all this shit into the oak tree and then getting more accurate collision system which is very exciting um so yeah that's all i uh have for you guys today hope you guys enjoyed hope you learned something and i will be putting the links to this shit and the uh, stack overflow question in the description so go take a look at those look at the theory there um and uh yeah that's all i uh, i said that already but um, yeah, have a good one. Uh, keep yourself safe and uh, see you guys next time.